Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar and in this video, I am going to give you an overview of what pain means to a clinician. And we will discuss first anatomy and physiology. You know, wherever there is a damaged tissue, then it activates the pain receptors in that area which are present in the nerve endings and the message of pain is carried through the attached nerve via spinal cord through spinothalamic tract right up to thalamus and then it is further relayed to cerebral cortex for perception. Therefore we know that you have to have a damaged tissue and you have to have a very intact neurological circuit right up to the cerebral cortex to perceive pain. Having said this, there are different types of stimuli which cause such activation of a pain receptors. They are largely mechanical or heat but also chemical stimuli. Friends, when mechanical or heat causes such pain sensation coming up through activation of pain receptors is generally acute and short lasting but when there are chemical stimuli coming out of a damaged tissue which activate the pain receptors and carry out the pain many times such types of pain by chemical stimuli last very long and therefore you have two types of pain in clinical practice one are acute and short lasting they may be recurrent but others are chronic and persistent having said this the most important part of this complex mechanism of pain is perception and ultimately the person should perceive pain via cerebral cortex to complain of pain this perception is a very complex mechanism it depends on largely the attention and expectation when you expect because of your hard work that you will end up with a body ache, headache etc you certainly start feeling that much before even it arises but more important is whenever you have an attention on that site of pain you are focused on that pain then the pain appears to be very severe though pain may not be actually of high intensity and we all know that when I am working in my clinic I forget my headache but as soon as my attention is away from work at the end of my work I start perceiving headache and you all know that the best remedy for headache the lay person uses is apply balm to the forehead and it works how does it work your attention is diverted from an actual headache to a burning sensation applied by the balm and also the smell that comes out and therefore if you have not been attending to your pain then you even don't perceive that is how there is no measurement objectively of any pain but pain is a very subjective thing and some patients may shout with very minimal pain while the others may tolerate a lot of pain and therefore it's not only the attention and expectation but it depends on the tolerance ability which varies individually and depends on multiple factors like the personality itself, the attitude, the previous experience and a belief that this is going to cause pain. Therefore, you can imagine how in clinical practice as pain has no objective measurement, it becomes a challenge to the clinician many times to judge the severity of pain and that is a challenge to find when you see a patient with pain. But having said that, there are also a natural modulating responses to pain. For example, when you get a severe abdominal pain, you find there is a rigidity and guarding over the abdomen, which is a result of a muscle spasm and that is a protective mechanism. And similarly, the patients know which posture to take to relieve pain and that is how there are normal, voluntary, modulatory responses. But besides that, there are also natural protective responses in the form of endogenous opioids which come out of hypothalamus and pituitary and they try to suppress your brain. Therefore, 
if you are an individual in whom your thalamus and pituitary can produce a reasonable large amount of endogenous opioids, then you may not feel severe pain even when there is a severe damage. And we all know we use opioids sometimes to relieve pain as a very potent painkiller. So you have natural protective modulatory response. But the other end of it is the psychosocial aspects of fear, anxiety, stress can really exaggerate mild pain and appear to be very severe. Don't you think pain and judgment of pain objectively is very difficult and therefore we need to understand this physiology of pain. But when it comes to pathology, it's simple. Majority of the pain is caused by inflammation but also caused by neurological pain, neurogenic pain as a result of a primary disease of the nerve itself. Besides that, there could be a vasogenic pain because if it's at the arterial end and the re result is an infarction, that is a cell damage, then it causes pain and then you have a typical myocardial infarct with a pain. And then if it's on the venous side, there is a venous pooling, venous stasis, as in case of varicose veins, then you also get leg pains. So friends, in pathology you may have commonly inflammation, but don't forget neurogenic and vasogenic pain. And of course there could be a psychogenic pain as well. And we know that a classical psychogenic symptoms are usually symptoms coming at a convenient time. And therefore, any patient who wakes up out of a deep sleep with pain, be sure it's something very serious. Having talked about the pathology, one important aspect of pathology is a concept of referred pain. Friends, when you have a hip joint pain, it is often referred to knee joint and the patient may complain of knee joint pain. And if you miss to examine his hip joint, you have missed the diagnosis. You know that myocardial infarction pain may not always hold the precordium but may be on the left shoulder or even the left jaw and a physician has to be very careful to understand the pain may be a referred pain and when you find that the site of pain complained by the patient has no physical examination correlate, you start wondering whether you are looking at a referred pain and not just a psychogenic pain. Having said all about such types of pain, how does one clinically approach pain? Friends, if it's a visceral pain, like an intestinal pain, it's generally poorly localized, diffuse and often less severe. But if it is affecting more superficial organs, like a peritoneum or a skin, then the pain is often sharp and often well localized. And this is what happens typically in an acute appendicitis when the patient complains with a periumbilical pain, diffuse, not so severe, but in the next 24-48 hours when the peritoneum is involved, the pain shifts to the right eye like fossa and it's very acute and severe and sharp. This is because embryologically the appendix comes from a mid gut and therefore the first symptom would be a mid-gut peri-umbilical pain which is not severe but when peritoneum is involved it becomes severe. This aspect is important to understand how the pain starts at one side but ends at another side. Having said all about this, the next issue is really that how can pain be controlled or relieved and obviously you are painkillers but friends, remember, painkillers are not going to kill pain every time. And every time the NSAID will not cure, simply because the pains are also different types. The typical dull ache pain or coming out of such severe pain may be inflammatory and NSAID may work. But the pain coming out of a tubular structure could be spasmodic like intestine, ureter or gallbladder ducts and there you may need an antispasmodic drug. And if it's a neurogenic pain, then it often presents as a burning pain or a shooting pain. And I recall a 
person who came with a abdominal pain but he said it was a burning pain across the abdomen and when we did not give a credence to what he was saying next day the herpetic vesicles came and you got pain we all know how herpetic pain is very severe it neurogenic and not only that you have a post herpetic pain also which may last very long if it's coming out of the chemical stimuli that i talked of so friends when relief of pain comes in it's not very easy but one other way that we need to remember is after all the manifestation of pain depends on the tolerance and can you increase your tolerance to pain the answer is yes and how is it done by maintaining good lifestyle meditation take away the mind from that pain and get engaged in doing something that you love to do and you will not feel so much of pain this is known as a biofeedback mechanism or meditation and that can improve your tolerance level and you can possibly tolerate even severe pain and get relief why take medications yes all medication taken for a long time are very renal toxic and today that's one of the common cause of a renal damage so friends this is all about the pain and you know something that i read and i found it was so very very clinically oriented that when dalai lama was asked by his disciples why has nature been unkind to give pain to the human being his answer was pain is inevitable in life but suffering is optional what he meant was increase your tolerance to pain distract your mind from that pain and then you will not feel pain what a wonderful philosophical way of talking about pain friends i hope you enjoyed this video and the next video will be by dr rajesh chokani and he will talk mainly on abdominal pain i hope you are going to be with us on subsequent videos as well thank you very much